Mr. Satter, uh, you are a longtime observer of Russia, and you have been very critical of the human rights abuses under President Vladimir Putin and also his aggressive foreign policy in, in the so-called near abroad. Uh, what happened in, in Ukraine and Crimea? Uh, was it a surprise for you? Uh, I can't say it was terribly surprising because the events in Ukraine are very threatening for Russia. The uh, criminal oligarchy that rules in uh, or ruled in Ukraine is very similar to uh, what to the criminal oligarchy that rules in Russia, and a popular uprising, a popular anti-criminal revolution, uh, is the last thing that the Russian authorities want to see in a neighboring country because it can serve as an example to the Russian people themselves. What is Vladimir Putin trying to achieve by uh, essentially intervening in Ukraine and particularly in Crimea? It, are there any uh, political, strategic or economic dividends out of this endeavor? Well, he will definitely, for at least in the short run, consolidate uh, the support of Russians for his regime. Uh, that's why uh, he is uh, interested in seizing Crimea. It's not as if Russia lacks for territory. It's the world's biggest country. But uh, acts of this kind are very popular with the Russian Republic. When uh, Russia invaded Georgia in 2008, the popularity ra rating of Dmitry Medvedev, who was then ostensibly the president, just shot up. So one of the things they're trying to do is to strengthen support for the regime with the help of this type of action. Other former Soviet republics, uh, people in Azerbaijan, are closely watching what's happening in Ukraine. Uh, is, and, and there are a lot of former Soviet republics with sizable Russian minority population. Yes. Is there a strong reason for them to be concerned about what's taking place? To a certain extent, for the Baltic republics, the problem was solved by accession to NATO. But for those, for those countries that don't have that advantage, uh, of course there's reason to be concerned. For example, Kazakhstan, northern Kazakhstan is populated by Russians, by and large, but who live within the within the borders of Kazakhstan. What's to prevent Russia from uh, declaring that northern, Caucasus, that nor northern Ca Kazakhstan is an independent country, holding a, a, a referendum and annexing it? So uh, the precedent is threatening for every, every one of the former Soviet republics, including Russia itself. After all, why if, if, this, if this is the way other Russia can behave, then why shouldn't China declare that it uh, is concerned about the treatment of Chinese of the Chinese minority in the Russian Far East? Mr. Satter, are we on the cusp of a second Cold War? How will the Russian intervention in Ukraine and Crimea impact the U.S.-Russian relations down the road? Well, it can only make them worse. I mean, the, we have the precedent of the invasion of Afghanistan. Now, that was a military invasion in which people were killed, and it was a violent takeover. But uh, that definitely had a chilling effect on U.S.-Soviet relations, and it was followed by very serious sanctions. Uh, <clears throat> there was a grain embargo. The U.S. refused to go to the, to the 1980 Olympics. American athletes didn't compete because of the, uh, the Russian invasion of Afghanistan. So uh, I think that this violation of Ukrainian sovereignty, this tearing off a piece of Ukrainian territory and incorporating it into Russia, if that's indeed what's going to happen, will uh, de definitely have a detrimental effect on relations. A little bit of a historical perspective. How do, how do the actions of Vladimir Putin uh, in terms of foreign policy, fit into the overall historical pattern of, uh, of, of Russian history, the, the, in the way the Russian leadership has behaved, uh, say, throughout modern history? Well, it's consistent with the way they've behaved. They're always uh, invading other countries in order to save them. Uh, they invaded uh, Hungary in order to save the Hungarians from counter-revolutionaries. They invaded uh, the Czechoslovakia for the same reason, Afghanistan, 
also to, to save the Afghans from a supposed foreign invasion, although they were the foreign invasion. Now they're saving the, uh, but then they, they saved the, the accessions from the, from the Georgians, and now they're saving the, the uh, Russian-speaking minority in Crimea from uh, <clears throat> the Ukrainians, although there's no evidence whatsoever that the, that the, the residents of Crimea were under any type of threat. Uh, except in the imaginations of the Russian authorities. So uh, they're definitely using the same tactics that Russia has used historically in situations when it felt it was in its interest to expand. How do you see the end game here? How does the situation develop from here on out as you see it? Well, a lot's going to depend on the West. If the West is, is very tough with the Russians, particularly if if there can be a united front in the matter of economic sanctions, I think it's still possible to uh, save uh, Crimea for Ukraine. But uh, it will take really concerted and uh, serious effort.